25th lecture and this is our problem session number 6. We continue solving problems on two port networks. We first take a couple of problems from the previous problem sheet which was number 6. 9.9 .9 we have already solved in the class this morning. We go to 9.10. I shall speak out the problem. The problem is to find the z and h parameters of the common emitter transistor represented by its T circuit model. The model is a resistance R B, a resistance R E, then a resistance R C, then a voltage generator with this polarity R M times I 1 and this is the two port V 2, I 2, V 1, I 1 <coughs> to find the Z and H parameters of this two port which represents the equivalent circuit of a common emitter transistor. <coughs> You note that this circuit, the first thing to notice is that it is not purely, it is not composed of purely passive elements. It contains a generator which is controlled by a current at some other point, correct? Current I1 controls this. So, this is a dependent generator, dependent generator. But <coughs> finding out the z parameters is absolutely no problem. Z parameters you simply write the equations of the two voltages V1 and V2. V1 is I1 Rb plus Re, I1 Rb plus Re plus I2 also flows through Re, so I2 Re and V2 is equal to first I1 Re, they drop across this plus I 2 R E plus R C then this generator I am I am taking K V L around this loop like this. So, it will be minus R M I 1. In other words V 2 the modified equation becomes I 1 R E minus R M plus I 2 R E plus R C. In other words <coughs> this is obviously Z 1 1, Z 1 2 is R E, Z 2 1 is R E minus R M and this is Z 2 2 and you notice that Z 2 1 and Z 1 2 are not equal and therefore, the network is non reciprocal. This is an example of a non reciprocal network. To find the H parameters, let us look at the <coughs> relationships you know V 1 and I 2, these are the H parameter dependent variables and they are written in terms of I 1 and V 2. This is equal to H 2 1 I 1 plus H 2 2 V 2. <coughs> so, our network is this. R C, R B, R E, then a generator plus minus R M I 1 and V 2. To find H 1 1, I find V 1 by I 1 with V 2 equal to 0, this has short circuit. All right? Yeah, but we have to find C 1. No, H 1 1 is not 1 by C 1. H 1 1 is 1 by y 1 1, is not that right? That is what we are finding out. We are finding out v 1 by i 1 with this short circuited. Now, how do we proceed? How do we proceed? Do we write two loop equations? If we write a node equation, we will find the voltage of this node, just one node. Is, does that help in finding v 1 and i 1?
Does that? Yes, it does. Is there any other way? Any other simpler way? No? Thevenin? How can I apply Thevenin here? The simplest way here is to write the mesh equations. Simplest way. Because the second mesh does have a control source which can be absorbed in I1. Okay? Let us say this is I2 and this is I1. So, V1 equal to I1 Rb plus Re plus I2 Re and 0 equals to if I go round this loop minus Rm I1 okay, minus Rm I1 plus Rc plus Re I2 plus Re I1. It is the same equation that we wrote earlier with the left hand side equal to 0. That is 0 equal to Re minus Rm I1 plus Rc plus Re I2. From the second equation, you find I2 in terms of I1. From this equation, you find I2 in terms of I1 and substitute in the first equation. That is it. Okay. So, the result is like this I2 is equal to Rm minus Re divided by Rc plus Re times I1. Therefore, V1 is equal to I1 times Rb plus Re plus I2 Re therefore, plus Re multiplied by Rm minus Re divided by Rc plus Re and therefore, V1 by I1 which is equal to H11 shall be equal to take Rc plus Re common here Rb plus Re multiplied by Rc plus Re Rc plus Re squared plus Re Rm minus Re squared. Sir, so, so the yeah. second equation would be Rb plus Rc. So, Re, fine, fine. Second equation, this one? No, this is okay. This is okay. Okay. Right. Thanks for the certification. <laughs> Re squared and Re squared cancel. I wanted to show that this cancel, there is no negative term uh, and therefore, this is equal to R B plus well I could combine this R B plus R E multiplied by R C. So R B plus two R E multiplied by R C this term, this term, this term. Okay. So it should be R B R C. It is R B plus R C into R E. Oh, this is R C. Yes, sir. Oh I I made a mistake. So it's okay, sir. It's okay. The next expression. Next expression. Yes, it should be R B plus R E into R C plus R E. Yeah, but R C plus R E have taken common here. So that should be sir R B R C. Oh, I made a mistake. R E R B. R E R B. R E R B. Okay. Does it correct it? Okay. Good. Well, you simplify this. I leave the rest to you. Similarly, you can find out H12, but you have to go back to the roots, the definitions. Do not try a shortcut. Okay? When there are controlled sources or dependent sources, word of caution, do not try to play smart. In other words, do not try to do it by inspection, do it carefully, because controlled sources can, can cause havoc. We next do 911. This is also from the previous previous uh, set, problem set 6. <coughs> 9 11 says the circuit in part A of figure, part A is this, we have a V S R S H 1 1, this is in terms of the H parameters plus minus H 1 2 V 2. <coughs> No, there is no common connection. 
the other part is H21 I1, then H22, then RL and this voltage is V2. This is part A of the figure. The circuit in part A of the figure is to be described by an equivalent input circuit shown in part B. Part B is V S then R S same as this and then a Z E Q. All right. This is part B. The circuit in part A of the figure is to be described an equivalent input circuit shown in part B determine Z E Q in B as a function of the elements and voltages in A. You have to find out Z E Q that is the problem which means that you, you have to find out what the impedance here is. We can ignore the thing the connection to the left. We can connect a voltage source here and find the current. Let us do that. There are several steps here, several points where one may make a mistake. So, what you do is we connect a V1 and H21. There are two control sources here, not one, a voltage source and a current source and one has to be very careful about not only sources, but also dimensions. These two are not birds of the same feather, is not that right? R L and H 22, what is the dimension of H 22? Admittance and therefore, if you want to combine R L with H 22, they are parallel connection you have to take either 1 by R L plus H 22 as the total admittance or R L parallel 1 by H 22 if you want it into impedance. Okay. Now, what you have to find out is the input impedance and you notice that <coughs> all I need is okay, I need I write the first equation V 1 is I 1 H 1 1 plus H 1 2 V 2 alright this is the first equation. Now, in order to find out V 1 by I 1 which is the input impedance that is Z E Q obviously, this will be H 1 1 plus H 1 2 V 2 by V 1. No, I 1 V 2 by I 1. So, all I need is V 2 by I 1 which is supplied by the second part of the circuit. You can notice that V 2 is equal to V 2 is equal to the negative of the voltage drop across this parallel combination by the flow of the current H 2 1 I 1. Therefore, by inspection no more equations need to be written this is minus you understand why it is the minus sign because V 2 and H 2 1 I 1 do not agree with each other. So, minus H 2 1 I 1 multiplied by R L parallel 1 by H 2 2 be careful here divided by R L plus 1 over H 2 2. Okay. So, wait a second what is the plan? We do not require Okay, wonderful. It should have been a multiplication sign yes, here. Sir. All right. So V2 is equal to minus H21. V2 by I1 equal to minus H21. Then RL per RL multiplied by 1 by H22 divided by RL plus 1 over H22. That is equal to minus H21 RL divided by 1 plus H22 RL. Therefore, Z E Q is equal to H 1 1 
then plus h 1 2 multiplied by v 2 by i 1 and I have found out v 2 by i 1. So, it would be minus h 1 2 h 2 1 r l divided by 1 plus h 2 2 r l that is the answer. <coughs> All right. Okay, we go to the last problem of the previous session that is 913. And 913 says find the y parameters of the twin T circuit of problem 9 to C. Well, problem 9 to C had two T networks in parallel, so it is called a twin T. The circuit is of this form. Z 1, Z 2, Z 3, this is one of the T's and the other T is connected in parallel that is from here you get let us say Z 1 prime, then Z 2 prime and the third element here is Z 3 prime. This is a general twin T network, twin or also called parallel T. Yes. What is gyrator? We shall do this later. We shall do this. I will discuss this in the class. What is a gyrator? do not uh, try this problem now, try it later. Okay. This is the general twin T or general parallel T and problem 9 to C was a special case of this in which these two were resistances, this was a capacitance, I hope so. Oh, these two are resistances, this is a capacitance, Z 3 is a capacitance then these two are capacitances and this is a resistance. Okay. Now, let us do it in general. Let us do it for the general twin T. You can specialize the values later. You put Z 1 equal to 1, Z 2 equal to 1 and so on and so forth. All right. Let us do it for the general case. Now, for the general case, Suppose, well, what we do now is to apply the T pi transformation, okay? T 2 pi transformation. That is suppose Z 1, Z 2 and Z 3, suppose this T is equivalent to let us say Y A, Y C and Y B. Suppose this T is equivalent to this pi, pi network. We have already derived the relationship that is Y A should be equal to Z 2 the opposite arm Z 2 divided by del where del is the determinant of the Z matrix that is simply equal to what is the Z matrix? Z 1 plus Z 3 Z 1 2 is Z 3, Z 3 and Z 2 plus Z 3 and if you notice this will be simply Z 1 Z 2 plus Z 2 Z 3 plus Z 3 Z 1 that is it Z 3 square term cancels out. So, this is del Y A is this Y B is by symmetry Z 1 divided by del and y c shall be equal to z 3 divided by del. So, we know y a y b y c in a similar manner the primed parameters will give rise to will give rise to the primed admittances and then all you have to do is in this relation you replace the prime unprimed ones by primed ones. And finally, the equivalent pi network of this, what you have is you have Y A, Y C, 
y b this is one of the equivalents the other equivalent is exactly similar that is between these two points between these two points will come y a prime between these two points will come y c prime and between these two points will come y b prime and therefore we can combine admittances and the total admittance of this would be y a plus y a prime here and if you recall if you recall the y parameter equivalent circuit in terms of the short circuit admittance parameters what does this amount to this would be question is not clear <coughs> mathematical equivalent of any two port in terms of its y parameters is the pi network a mathematical equivalent here it is also physical equivalent what were these elements y 1 1 plus y 1 2 this element was minus y 1 2 and this element is y 2 2 plus y 1 2. So, if you look at this if you if you make the corresponding equivalences this would be y 1 1 plus y 1 2 then y c plus y c prime would be minus y 1 2 minus y 1 2 prime and I beg your pardon no prime minus y 1 2 this is for the total network and y b plus y b prime would be equal to y 2 2 plus y 1 2 this is also equal to minus y 2 1 from which now you can find out y 1 1 y 2 2 and y 1 2 ok. It would be instructive to find the expression for the y parameters of a general parallel T parallel T R C network. You see in the 9 to C the, the element values are specified. Suppose you do it for this it would be instructive to do it. You have an R you have an R then a C and then you have a 2 C and specializing the values and then you have a C and a C in parallel with not 2 R R by 2 the parallel combination of R and R parallel combination of C and C is here the parallel combination of R and R is here it is instructed to find out the parameters y 1 1 y 2 2 and y 1 2 and you shall notice that minus y 1 2 parameter of this circuit of this circuit shall look like this it will be a resistance in series with a capacitance and then a resistance in series with an inductance. The circuit did not contain any inductance, but the equivalent circuit only for this minus y 1 2 parameter looks like this in which one of the resistances is negative. Okay. One of the resistances C and L are uh, positive, but one of the resistances is negative all right i want you to verify this which resistance is negative and and does this mean that we can generate inductor out of capacitor and resistor passive network in other words can we realize this impedance consisting of an inductor a capacitor and resistors i want you to think about it and I want you to find out the voltage transfer function V2 by V1 open circuit under the condition that I2 equal to 0 and I want you to verify 
to verify my prediction it may be right it may be wrong but I want you to verify that this is of the form of the transfer function that we worked out in problem number 2 of minor 1 that is it is of the form s squared plus omega n squared divided by s squared plus twice zeta omega n s plus omega n squared where omega n is equal to 1 over r c. Omega n is equal to 1 by r c. I want you to verify this and I want you to find out to find out what is the q of the network 1 over 2 z you have to find this out <laughs> what is it all right I also predict that this would be 1 quarter okay so zeta is equal to 2 what does it mean poles on the negative real axis they are not complex even though we have an equivalent inductor here while the inductor capacitor and the resistance is so conspire that poles are still on the negative real axis but I want you to do this completely all right our next problem will be from the new set of problems problem set 7 and the first one that we work out is 914. Nine fourteen. We will work out part A. But you said that it poles are on negative real axis. Zeta has no significance. Zeta has no significance. Q has. Q has. Zeta is no longer cosine theta because cosine theta theta is zero. Okay, but Q has. Q is the frequency of null. Frequency at which the transmission is 0 divided by the bandwidth between half power points which you can show I am throwing out challenges I, I claim all that I have claimed you have to prove either I am right or I am wrong I may be partially right <laughs> I may be partially, partially right means partially wrong ok right ok. 914 says find the z parameters of the circuits A and B. We will we'll work out A. It is not a trivial example, so I want you to notice carefully. I want you to find I want to find out the z parameters and this transformer is given as ideal. We will go back to our roots of ideal transformer. The dots are not given we assume the dots like this if they are not given you assume according to your convenience and this is convenient then we have a pi equivalent circuit that is y a y b and y c to bring variety into experience we have always we have always assumed y c here well this has been interchanged this should not baffle you this is v 2 i 2 and this is v 1 i 1 you are required to find out the z parameters of this. All right, the first thing we do is <coughs> we do is you go back to the definition of a transformer. It's an ideal transformer means that the two inductances are infinite, but their ratio is finite. Okay, which means that if this voltage is V1 then this voltage should be V1 by N. N is the turns ratio, the turns ratio okay. and we do not care about mutual inductance because mutual inductance is also infinite in such a manner that the coefficient of coupling is 1, coefficient of coupling is 1. In addition we know that the device, the device is passive, passive and lossless there are no losses and therefore the total power into the transformer should be 0 which means 
that this current should be equal to I 1 n. Is that clear? Is this obvious? This is obvious is not it? V 1 I 1 is the power going in. So, the power going out must be V 1 I 1 or the power going in from here must be minus V 1 I 1. No, no you see that is I wanted you to ask this question. It should be cleared once and for all. n is to 1 this is the ideal transformer uh, we write ideal here then v 1 i 1 is the power going in and from the other terminal v 2 i 2 is the power going in this should be equal to 0 and if you put v 2 equal to v 1 by n then i 2 becomes minus n i 1 which means that i 1 n goes out rather than coming in all right this is my that solves half the problem. Now, what you have to find out is Z11. <coughs> okay. Z11, all right. We look at this, we look at this circuit. Z11 is simply under this condition V1 by I1 with I2 equal to 0. That means this is left open, this is left open. Now, <coughs> you notice that V1 by N this voltage must be equal to I 1 n multiplied by the equivalent impedance presented by this combination. I am doing it by inspection. Okay. V 1 by I did not go to the input terminals. Notice I do not need to all I need to find is a relation between V 1 and I 1 and the most convenient point is here. The voltage is V 1 by n the current going out is I 1 n. So, V 1 by n equal to I 1 n multiplied by <coughs> the impedance. How do I find the impedance? 1 by y a plus y b y c divided by y b plus y c. Okay. Therefore, V 1 by I 1 is equal to n squared y b plus y c divided by y a y b plus y b y c plus y c y a. Is that clear? No loop equation, no node equation, no k v l, no k c l, no k v l of course, we have used. We have not used k v l, we have used only Ohm's law that voltage equal to current multiplied by the impedance that is all. Okay, so, we have found out Z 1 1. To find out what else can we find out from here? Z 2 1. What is the definition of Z 2 1? Z 2 1 is V 2 by I 1 under the condition pardon me? I 2 equal to 0. So, the same, same circuit holds good. I will only explain and I leave the calculations to you. <coughs> I have to find out V 2 in terms of I 1. Okay. Obviously, I can forget about the initial part of the circuit. What I have is let me draw the essential part. Essential part is that a current I 1 n comes to a parallel combination of Y A, then Y B, then Y C and this voltage is V 2. I can forget about the rest of it. I need a relation between V 2 and I 1. So, V 2 is equal to I 1 n it divides into two parts one is along this the other along the other one and therefore, this will be 1 by Y A divided by I am doing it absolutely by inspection current division in two parallel branches. 1 by y a plus 1 by y b plus 1 by y c <coughs> multiplied by 1 over y c and therefore, you see the z <coughs> 2 1 would be simply equal to I can write the expression now v 2 by i 1 n times y b in the numerator and in the denominator we shall have y a 
y b plus y b y c plus y c y a. Agreed? With a little practice these things will come <coughs> automatically. The next problem that is to find out z 2 2 and z 1 2 there is a small trick uh, there is a small trick the existence of a small trick has to be recognized. Let us see what this is. Is there any question on this calculation of z 2 1 all right. Let us calculate z 1 2 and z 2 2 for both of them if you recall v 1 equal to i 1 z 1 1 plus i 2 z 1 2 and v 2 equal to i 1 z 2 1 plus i 2 z 2 2 we want to calculate z 1 2 and z 2 2 for both of them I need i 1 to be equal to 0 i 1 equal to 0. Okay. So, let us draw this circuit. <coughs> n is to 1 i 1 equal to 0 means <coughs> that the source cannot be connected here source must be on the other side all right and i 1 equal to 0 means what is this current also 0 0 current which means that these two terminals can be thought of as open if they are open then all i have is this circuit y a y b and y c. So, what if the current is 0 want to be a short circuit? Current is 0 is open set ok <coughs> y c there is no current here, but there is a voltage here. What is the voltage? This voltage was v 1 open circuit a voltage can exist and this would be v 1 by n. So, this is v 1 by n this is the trick this is the existence which is recognized and I have a v 2 here do I have a v 2 and this current is I 2. So, what I have to do is to find out the admittance looking from here this would be I am sorry the impedance looking here this would be z 2 2 v 2 by i 2 and obviously, z 2 2 if you look at it carefully would be 1 over y c plus y a y b divided by y a plus y b hmm? y b yes thank you which is equal to y a plus y b divided by the same expression that is y a y b plus y b y c plus y c y a and z 1 2 z 1 2 is v 1 by i 2 v 1 by i 2. Now, what I have is i 2, but this is not v 1 it is v 1 by n and therefore, I can write this as make a small modification I write this as n times v 1 by n divided by i 2 agree. So, this is n times <coughs> now I have to find out what current is flows here what is the current this is i 2 multiplied by 1 over y c divided by 1 over y c plus 1 over y b plus 1 over y a is it too fast yes, yes. <laughs> into 1 over y a also 1 over y a yes I have done that so, what oh, does not matter this is a current this current flows in two directions one is through y c and the other is through y b and y a see this connection. So, the current division this current would be 1 by y c this impedance divided by the sum of the impedances that is what I have done okay. and this current drops across y a and therefore, what I shall have is 1 over y c into 1 over y a divided by okay, 
1 by y a plus 1 by y b plus 1 by y c and therefore, the expression would be n times y b divided by the same expression y a y b plus y b y c plus y c y a. Apparently, a tough problem, but the solution is not tough. Once you recognize what is happening in the ideal transform, that is it. Instead of dot being in that direction, if the dot was in opposite direction. Okay. What would have changed? Would the would Z one one change? No. Z two two no. What would have changed is Z one two and Z two one. Would you also notice that Z one two and Z two one are equal? Have you noticed this? They are they are equal n times y. They have to be equal because the transformer is a reciprocal device. So is y a y b y c. So the total network is reciprocal. So it verifies that z one two is equal to z two one. Any question? So if the transformer is non-ideal, then also it is reciprocal. If the transformer is not yes, then also it is reciprocal because it passes current equally well in all directions. After all, what is a transformer? Consists of three inductors. Each inductor is a bilateral element, and therefore. It is a reciprocal network. The last passive. So then it won't be passive. Transformer won't be passive. If it is non-ideal. If it is non-ideal, it is more passive. <laughs> okay. V1 I1 plus V2 I2. It is greater than equal to zero. For an ideal transformer, it is exactly equal to zero. For a non-ideal transformer, it may be greater than zero. A transformer is a passive device. All right. The last problem of the day. <coughs> reciprocity of transformer. Oh, reciprocity of transformer. Okay. Once again, equate the. Apply the definition. Okay. Apply the definition. You want an ideal transformer or a non-ideal? Oh, it doesn't matter. Let us have a non ideal L1, L2, M. You apply a voltage here, and uh, what is the definition of Z12? Z12 V1 by I2. So, no, you connect a current generator here and keep this open, find the voltage here. And you do the other way around. That is, you connect a current generator here and go to the other end. This is mathematical derivation, mathematical verification of the fact that Z12 equal to Z21. But is this needed? That is the question. It is not needed because physically a transformer has three inductances L1, L2, and the third is not a physical inductance. You cannot hold it in hand. It is because of the mutual coupling between the two, but equivalent the dimension is that of an inductance n, which can pass current equally well in both directions. That is whether whether you generate flux here or you generate flux here, the mutual coupling will be the same for the same amount of flux. All right, and therefore m is also a, a bilateral element and there is no reason why the transformer should not be reciprocal. The, the losses in the coils they do not affect the reciprocity because they are pure resistances. They also e con conduct current equally well in both directions. All right. The last problem of the day we shall calculate we shall use 918, 918 and B. I am going to tell you something a new technique for analyzing such networks which you have not done so far and <coughs> the circuit is this there is a 1 ohm resistance there is a 1 farad capacitance there is a 2 henry inductor there is a 1 farad capacitance 
1 ohm resistance and this voltage is V2 and this voltage is V1. The question asks for the transfer function V2 by V1. Okay. There are many ways that we can we can solve the problem. One of the things is we can write uh, node equation. We can do that. There is only one node. This is V2, this is V1. So, I have to find the equation, I have to find this value. We can write loop equations 1, 2. You can either combine this into 1 or you can write a third loop equation, third mesh equation. Okay. You can do that. Now, what we are going, we, you can also apply Thevenin's theorem to the left of these lines, then to the left of these lines or to the left of this line, Thevenin's or Norton's, whichever case may be. The calculations are the least in a third alternative, which we are going to see. There, there is one more alternative. You see, you could convert this pi into a t, this pi into a t and then calculate the voltage transfer function or you could convert this t into a pi. You could do that. There are many methods, there are many methods which can be. What I am going to tell you is going to be very extremely simple and this is as follows. I come, I start from here and go back. I start from here and go back. What is the current through this? V2. Then what is the current through this? V 2 s. Then what is the current through this? The sum of these two? So, V 2 into 1 plus s. Agreed? Then what is this voltage? Let us call this voltage as V 3. That would be V 2 into 1 plus s multiplied by this impedance 2 s plus V 2. This drop plus this drop. Agreed? Is that clear? Which is equal to you can express this as 2 s squared plus 2 s plus 1. So, I know this voltage V 3, then I know this current, this would be V 3 times s. If I know this current and this current, then I know this current is the sum of the two. Okay. And then you find V 1 is <laughs> being is being a bit fast. No, all right. Because it's so simple, it's so transparent. Okay, I know this current, so I know the voltage V1. This is the drop across one ohm plus V3, whatever we found out. All right, and you notice that we have found out a relation between V1 and V2. I want you to verify that the final solution is. V2 by V1 equal to 1 by 2 S cubed plus 4 S squared plus 4 S plus 2. This is the solution. Now, once you find this solution, it is a nice practice, a good practice to check at some spot frequencies and the spot frequencies most convenient spot frequencies are DC and infinity. Let us look at the circuit. At DC, at DC, this capacitor is open, this inductor is short, this is open and therefore, you have voltage division between 1 ohm and 1 ohm. Transfer function should be half. Let us look at the, let us look at the expression. If S is put equal to 0, it is exactly half. Okay. At infinite frequency, infinite frequency, this is a short. So, nothing should go there. Is not that right? Infinite frequency, the transfer function should be 0. Not only it is a short, this is open. So, nothing should go to the output. Now, look at the, look at the expression. When you put S equal to infinity, this is obviously 0. So, the transfer function in all probability is correct. But we have not checked at all frequencies. Even this is a necessary condition, not sufficient for accuracy. Do you understand this? It is necessary, but
but it gives you a confidence I have done it correctly most probably it is correct. I also gave you one problem to solve in either when discussing mesh analysis or node analysis if you if you recall there is an oscillator question phase shifting network. Now what you can do is you can solve was it this circuit or C and R interchange whatever way it is you assume this to be V0 this to be V i then work backwards. And in the process there are also some tricks of the trade which you learn the product S C R shall continue to come and you will see only D is missing as far as the instructor's name is concerned ok. That is why R C circuits are very popular with me and most favorite. Now this will continue to come instead of writing this again and again you will save a bit of algebra if you put this into some expression u and then when you want to find out and you will see that the transfer function h of s will be a function of u. You do not require c, r and s separately it will be a function of u. So, you can work in terms of u when s equal to j omega u equal to j times some quantity x where x is omega c r. This uh, give you simplification these notations give you simplification of the algebra all right because somewhere you might miss the r and then you are done the whole problem will become null and void and did i say that there is a frequency at which the phase shift is exactly pi and this frequency is 1 over root 6 cr so u shall be equal to 1 over root 6 and at this frequency the transfer function value is equal to the magnitude is 1 by 29 and since the phase shift is 180 degree the transfer function will become exactly minus 1 by 29. I want you to verify this for the last statement of the day once again a, a problem which I set for you for the parallel T network that we have solved today by T pi conversion ok by T pi conversion you could also do by mesh analysis you could do by node analysis you could also do by another method and I want to outline this in half a minute. What I have is let me not name the elements. please note what I am doing what these are two T's and I have connected in parallel ok. Let me show this by uh, on the green ok. What I have done is I have connected this to this well if I say this is some symbol grounded this is by reference after all all voltages are measured then this is also here and then what I have done is I have connected this terminal to this terminal and this terminal to this terminal that is how parallel T is formed and I have connected a source here V 1 ok. Suppose, suppose I do this connection this is my V 2, but I split the source into two sources all I need is by what is that theorem called no compensation. compensation. Well, all I need is a volt a constant voltage V 1 here that is all I need. So, what I will do is I will connect a voltage source V 1 here and I will connect a voltage source V 1 here. I can do that the potentials at these two points will be the same and they will behave like physically connected to each other and two sources V 1 and V 1 connected in parallel shall still be equivalent to one source giving a voltage of V 1. Now, what you can do all your interest is in finding V 2 by V 1. So, you can apply Thevenin's theorem now ok to the left of these lines to the left of these lines no loop analysis no mesh analysis no solution of simultaneous equation no all you do is apply Thevenin's theorem. 
then what I have is one source okay, and the other source in series with and this is V2. Isn't this what we will get? Okay, this is the thevenin, this is the thevenin and this element is the third element, this element and this element. So, that means the point of intersection of 3z are not uh, connected, is not connected. So, where the 3s are made? No, this were not connected in the original either. Point of intersections were, were isolated. This point was not connected to this point. No, if t was connected then it becomes a single t. Right? So, here what all you have to do is write one node equation. That is or you argue like this, this current should be equal to this current. That is all from which V2 by V1 can be found out. If this can be done in 5 minutes, mesh analysis or node analysis will require at least 20 minutes. This is done by inspection, no solution of simultaneous equation, no determination of determinant alright and when such a thing is done it should be done with confidence. Last question if instead of a voltage source it was a current source could we do this no sir could we split into two with equal current sources no, sir. not at all because two current sources in parallel i1 and i1 would give two i1 not i1 is there a way i claim that there is no way that a current source could have been dealt to it in exactly the same manner. If you can find a way, let me know. Thank you.